35 years ago, Ferrari did the almost unthinkable and built a production road car that did over 200 miles an hour. In so doing, they created the icon of icons. This is the F40 and it's glorious. This immaculate, beautiful F40 belongs to lifetime Ferrari fan Jerry Levy and he's kindly lent it to us today to remind me what this outrageous road racer is all about. Although to be honest, it's such a wild car that every drive I've had in F40s is etched forever in the mind. Let's just say the F40 leaves an indelible impression. But the question we're answering today is whether this car stripped back, raw, racer for the road, has anything at all in common with the SF90, which embraces technology to redefine performance once again. Today, we're gonna find out. Okay, so 35 years later, what is the F40 like on the road? Woo! I don't know if you can tell I'm sweating, but it is physical. Everything requires effort. The steering is not assisted. And I feel like you can't get very good leverage on it because it's this strange uh, laid back position. The gearbox is lovely, but it really requires some muscle. The throttle has got this sticky stiction at the top, so it's hard to be smooth with it. So your first impression, including the ride, which is really pretty stiff and it creaks and groans, is that this is a car that is not necessarily on your side. And I think that's the reputation as well with the F40. But the truth is, the engine in particular, yeah, there's, there's lag, of course there is. This 2.9 V8 twin turbo, it needs some revs to come on boost. So maybe three and a half, four thousand, but it, it's not so much a bang, it comes in a wave, so you don't have huge amounts of power, but you feel it building behind you, you can hear it, and then it comes on, so here it comes, four, four and a bit, and when you're in it, it's really vivid, this thing's so light, so when you combine that stiff ride and the way the car will bounce across bumpy roads with this, not spiky, but this big wave of torque that comes in, it means it keeps you so busy just trying to keep the thing on boost and in its sweet spot. And on certain roads, that's hard work. But the beauty of the car, everything you put in, you get out. So it demands a lot, but the rewards are big. The rewards are really, really big. But everywhere you look and everything you touch is just, got a specialness about it and the car feels you're in an F40 you can't mistake it the view out the back the physicality of everything you touch this slow steering compared to a modern Ferrari and how much weight there is at low speed it does lighten up but it never bubbles up with feedback the brakes are not assisted either and they require a big old shove and you do worry they're not going to work at all so today it's a lot easier to go really fast in a supercar, but it is that equation, effort to reward, and that's where this car gets it right, because you never forget you're in it, you're not gonna to wanna to drive this car every day, but the days you take it out, you will remember for a very, very long time. So that was the F40, the old icon, and this is the SF90. Nearly a thousand horsepower. So how does it feel, and can I feel a thread between that car and this car? Well, initially the answer is a flat no, basically. I know that this car is heavier, considerably heavier than the F40, but the way things have moved on in terms of technology, means that the illusion is the complete opposite. So I've got this light, fast steering and the car just changes direction so well. I touch the throttle, that's no rev space for the here. And I've got the hybrid to fill in the gap. So the turbo, you wait for the turbos in the F40. In this, you don't. Any gear, you have instant acceleration. And does it feel twice as fast as an F40? Probably not, but it's not far off, it's 
nuts, like fully, fully nuts. The gearbox, obviously in the F40, it requires technique and effort and actual physical strength at times. This requires none of those things. But weirdly, Ferrari managed to make dual clutch boxes and paddle shift gearboxes in general that are satisfying to use and they give you a sense of connection with the car. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That you don't expect. So overall, you jump from one to the other and you notice this just ultra responsiveness. A much better ride, less noise, more performance. There is progress in so many ways. I guess it's whether you like that progress. Do you want your performance to come as easily as it comes in this car? Or do you want to work for it, which you really, really have to work for it in the F40? But for me, their differences are not a disappointment in any way because you don't want Ferrari to stand still. The whole point of the F40 was... <laughs> it was the fastest thing they knew how to make at the time. And to do it, they stripped everything back. Technology's changed. This is the fastest thing they know how to make now. And it's that relentless pursuit of performance that is the thread. The cars feel different, they sound different, they look different. And although they both perform like absolute madmen, even the quality and quantity of the performance is completely different. But the thread is that absolute laser focus on making the fastest and most exciting car they can. Ferrari just want to go fast and they will adopt whatever technology they need to do it with more drama, more excitement, and just more craziness than anyone else. And that's good enough for me.